Now, I love Smash Bros. I'm not that good at it, but I have a lot of memories with Nintendo's platform fighter. And while I'm not the best at it, it's still an enjoyable experience playing it, as long as I'm winning. But today isn't about Smash Bros. Today is about my other love, Webtoon. I talk a lot about Webtoon on this channel, it's kind of my brand, so I never really get a chance to talk about video games. However, today will be the weirdest middle ground of both, because today I wanted to imagine how certain Webtoon characters would play in a Webtoon platform fighter. In the Webtoon, the Webtoon Combat, Combat Tournament. Tournament. Now, a couple things before getting started. First things first, this isn't a game, no one's making this game, I'm not making this game. For both legal reasons, since I don't own the characters or the brand, and for lack of ability. Whether it be game design, coding knowledge, or even art design. I mean, look at the character stand-ins. Look at them. This is just a fun thought experiment, asking what a webtoon platform fighter would look like. Next, I'll explain the structure of this video and possible future videos. I'll explain a bit about the character and where they're from, why I think they would be a fun and interesting platform fighter. Then I'll go into the character's overall gameplay style. I won't go too in-depth about like tilts and aerials or grabs or frame data or whatever. Just how I think the fighter should play. But I will then talk in-depth about the fighter's specials, because that's where I think the fun of a character is. Then any extra bits of information, you know, maybe like character costumes or whatever. And then I'll end it off with a sage from the series. So let's start with one of my personal favorite webtoon series. I love Hardcore Leveling Warrior, so much so that my phone actually starts to autocorrect the H of Hardcore into a capital H. The premise is pretty simple. Hardcore Leveling Warrior follows the titular Hardcore Leveling Warrior, who I'll refer to as Ethan, which is his real name. Ethan was the number one ranked player of Lucid Adventure, a grand MMORPG that you can play while you sleep. While the SAO alarm might be going off, don't worry, this series is actually, you know, good. Ethan's number one rank didn't come from noble quests or adventures, it came from his skill, his knowledge, and his kind of scumminess? Ethan kind of sucks. He's cocky, he's rude, he's mean to others, but it all comes from experience and strength. He can back up that trash talk. The reason he sticks out so much in the series is because how fun he is. His personality is always a blast to see interact with others, but seeing him in action is just as fun. Ethan uses his signature sword that changes its name depending on the chapter for some reason. But he also uses a lot of spells and magic. He'd just be a really fun character to play as. Now, the swordsman character is, is pretty generic and unoriginal. However, Ethan isn't a swordsman. There's actually a difference in-game, or I guess in the webtoon, between swordsmen and players who just use swords. Sora, another character in the series, is a swordsman. Meanwhile, Ethan just kind of uses a blade. I want to exemplify this difference in Ethan's playstyle. I think his idle pose kind of culminates this. Confidence and cockiness. A sword slung over his shoulder, not in a swordsman position. His attack should be strong, but not necessarily sharp. Maybe a little laggy, maybe taking a sec to fully connect, but pack a punch. Meanwhile, his other type moves that don't use swords should be scummier type attacks. Faster punches and kicks, maybe even attacks that trip. But I think where he really shines is his specials, and boy did I choose a cool character to start this series off with. For those unaware, a character has two types of attacks. Standard attacks and special attacks. A character usually has four specials. The neutral special, the side special, the up special, also known as the recovery, and a down special. Unlike standard attacks, special attacks should draw almost direct inspiration from attacks and actions that take place in the webtoon. Luckily, Hardcore Leveling Warrior already has special attacks known as skills. These skills are used often, but still special enough to get you skill and then the skill name to appear when used. So all of Ethan's specials will be these skills, kind of. So let's start with his neutral special. Ethan uses Lucky Coin as his neutral special. When used, Ethan will use his offhand to flip his signature Lucky Coin. In the series, Lucky Coin is a stat boosting ability that flips a coin, and when it lands on a preferred side, it boosts something. Thanks to Ethan's unique personal attribute, it often lands on this side, and when it does, a number of things can happen. 
A specific stat can increase. Sometimes skills are borrowed. Sometimes he gets the ability to heal. It really depends on the situation. So we have some creative liberty here. First things first, the toss animation can be moved out of. If Ethan stands still, he catches the coin, shortening the animation and giving the effects immediately on the catch. If he moves out of it, the coin animation still plays, but it must make contact with a surface or an opponent to trigger its effects, though it will be slightly delayed. Yes, that means the coin has a hitbox and will do a small amount of damage and semi-spike the opponent in the air, because that sounds fun to see. So, you have options. Standing makes you an easier target, but gives you the effect sooner. Meanwhile, you can move around and attack during it, but there's a delay to the results. But why flip a coin? Maybe you can just do Shulk's Monado thing. Well, the thing is, flipping a coin gives a chance to get the results. Now, Ethan has a high probability of landing on his preferred side. However, they say his chances nosedive when he uses more than one. So here's how I think it'll work. During each life, Ethan's chances of success start at like 90%. Every time he succeeds on a coin toss, his chances drop by 5 or like 10. So like if it's 90, it drops to 80. Or if it's 90, it drops to 85. I don't mean like 9, whatever. Eventually getting down to a 50-50 shot. These chances stay until his next stock and then they're reset. But what are the effects? Well, since it's a mixed bag, I thought it would be fun to give everything a chance. As four things can happen, weighted by the percent you're at. Below 50, you have a higher chance of increasing strength, which is attack and knockback, or agility, jump boost, and speed. You still have a chance, but a lower chance to increase defense, decreasing damage and knockback received. Above 50, you have an equal chance of increasing all three stats. Above 100, you have an equal chance of getting these three stats, but you also have a chance to heal some percent once. You'll glow when the effects are active. Blue for defense, green for agility, and red for strength. It would last for 10 to 15 seconds and would have a 10 second cooldown. Just think of it like Shulk's Monado Arts except it doesn't have a drawback, and it's a chance that you'll get an effect if you get anything at all. Moving on to our side special, we have Hellfire. Hellfire is a powerful fiery blast with a good range and good damage. Ethan uses it a lot during the series, so to make it a little more balanced, Hellfire will be a charge up attack, going through three stages before it's released. During the charge up, the player can angle the attack, but they're motionless, stuck in place while they're holding the attack. The attack would cover a good quarter to a third of the stage and have a max damage at the furthest point of the blast. But it could be interrupted. If a player gets hit during the last stage of the charge up, the player will take small damage, kind of like Ridley's neutral special. Our up special or recovery was a little tricky. There aren't really any skills that take Ethan upward. So we're taking some liberties with combo skill Moonlight Slash Tornado, a skill he uses like once but it reminds me a lot of Meta Knight's side special, which is my direct inspiration for this. A combination of that move and Ridley's up special. Ethan takes a second in air or on the ground to charge it up, and then the user points in a direction that they want to go. And then the character goes in that direction, but with the drill rush properties. It's a multi-hit attack that could be slightly angled, but not too much. Finally, our down special. I wanted to capture the essence of Ethan, and I think I did a pretty good job, but there's one aspect I still haven't captured. The reason Ethan gets so strong is because of his class skill. During duels and other forms of bets, Ethan can take things that normally can't be taken. Special bonded items, unique skills, and stats. I wanted to incorporate this and have an interesting idea. Ethan's down special will be class skill gamble. When activated, a gamble is made. Ethan has to kill an opponent to complete the gamble before the effect runs out. If it runs out, nothing happens and the skill has a 45 second cooldown. However, it, the interesting part comes if the player wins or loses. A loss is when a player dies during the gamble effect. Here we have a couple options. First, the gamble skill will be nullified for a minute to two minutes during the next stock. But that's not all. During the nullified time frame, strength, agility, and or defense could be lowered. Maybe the chance of getting a successful coin flip will be lowered starting out. Maybe you'll start out with 30% the next stock. Maybe a mix of a couple of these things. However, where things get really interesting is when the player wins. If the player manages to get a kill during the gamble effect, a number of things can happen. First and most basic, strength, agility, and defense could be raised, which is basic and boring and whatever. However, what could be interesting is if the gamble skill was replaced. 
Kind of like how Ethan steals skills and stats, what if winning the game causes the player to steal the opponent's down special? Having their opponent's down special be nullified and using it for themselves. This is a little complicated because I do have other characters plans and their down specials do require their entire body to move, which means Ethan would need like an animation for everyone's down special. But I still think it'd be a really cool advantage. Imagine stealing someone's down special and then when they come back they just can't use it. But if that's too complex, I still have another idea. Something I mentioned in the lucky coin is that if you win, sometimes skills are borrowed. And Ethan has other skills in the game. So what if winning the gamble still nullifies the opponent's down special, but Ethan also gets a new down special? I have some special skills for this gamble skill, but this video is already going longer than I thought, so I'll just speedrun this stuff. Hell Explosion is a powerful blast centered on the player. It's a self-damaging move that deals massive damage to those caught in it. Stormcutter is the opposite, a weaker attack that does deal more knockback damage, uh, and there are strong winds around it with wind boxes that don't deal damage but push opponents. Meanwhile, Magic Magnet is a projectile reflector. Simple. And there you go, the most complicated character I have planned <sighs> so far. As for character details and costumes, I got a few ideas. His golden armor is pretty iconic and synonymous with the number one ranker. The red, white, and black outfit he wears during the combat tournament reminds me a lot of playing cards, which I think could be a cool idea. Meanwhile, you can use one of his newbie outfits or the most recent one, and while I know it's not Ethan, the Nightmare Ethan would be a cool costume. As for character details, an interesting idea is that Ethan has Hero's Body, which lets you consume own HP to break range limit of action. So in-game, he moves around faster than he should because he's inflicting self-damage. What could be interesting is that Ethan will probably have a double jump, but could inflict self-damage to gain a third jump as like a last resort. It's just something I thought I'd toss in. As for the stage, I thought about what this hypothetical series is named after. The Combat Tournament. A giant stage surrounded by a massive coliseum. To make things interesting, the stage would change. Like the Pokemon Stadium. I'm not making multiple stages, I'm not an artist, this took forever to make. But it would change, like it does in the actual webtoon. It would change from a basic greenlands to maybe like a lava zone to a place with like traps uh, or to like a more village and saloon kind of place. The way the stage would change is that this uh, uh, spinner would kind of float in and then start spinning and then one of the uh, one of the stage there would be like stage symbols on each parts of it. This is actually directly from the webtoon too, I'm proud of this. And then when it lands on it, the stage will change. The stage's basic form is like the final battle form. And it would have uh, kind of just pillars floating in and out, just for some variety. And that's it. Whew. I wasn't planning on this for being a Friday video, but the script is four pages and I worked so hard on those assets that um, screw it. <laughs> it's gonna be a Friday video. Uh, it's something new and I wanted to talk about this for a while. I have a couple more character specials and general ideas made. I have three fully thought out ones and four more that I'm still thinking through. But hey, if you have ideas, give them to me. Any character or any of their specials would be nice. Feel free to leave them in the comments or in my Discord. And just to get this out of the way for those still here, I am thinking through John of Unordinary specials. He's one of the few that I'm working on. But if this interests you, show your support. And if this ever does get another video, next time I'm going to be talking about everyone's favorite reader, Doja Kim. Take care.